So negotiations between Errol Spence and Terence Crawford fell apart and they will not be fighting each other before the end of 2022. That's a sentence I didn't think I would say if you asked me three months ago. I was one of those naive conspiracy theorists that thought this was really going to happen before the end of the year. I even made a video saying it would happen and now I'm out here eating my own asshole. Terence Crawford is now going to be fighting David Evanesian this December, and for those of you unfamiliar with that name, today we're going to take a quick look at some of his recent fights. But first, the message from today's sponsor, Boxing Showtimes. If you're a boxing fan and never want to miss a fight, Boxing Showtimes is the only app you'll need. This app has a full boxing schedule that will show you where to buy tickets, keep you up to date with boxing news, give you reminders on upcoming fights, and so much more. My favorite feature of Boxing Showtimes is the interactive map that allows you to see what places are showing the fights closest to you. Use my link in the description to download for free, and once again thank you Boxing Showtimes. Okay, so the main thing we're going to be looking at is Evanesian's pressure fighting style, since that's what he displays the most in his recent fights. Like the name suggests, Evanesian likes to come forward to apply pressure on his opponent, but behind that his main defense is the traditional high guard, which is designed to protect you from straight punches. He also has a relatively squared up stance, and the purpose of this is to bring his right hand closer to his opponent, since he loves to lead his offense with straight right hands while slipping his head to the inside, instead of leading with the jab. So you see here as his walking down Josh Kelly is applying the pressure with that high guard and once he walks him down to the corner you're going to see he squares up into his stance and then he shoots the right hand while slipping to the inside. And while the squared up stance does present a bigger opening of his own center line, Avenesian uses the high guard to cover up the opening of the middle. However, like I said, the main purpose of the stance is to surprise his opponents with lead right hands as his right hand is much closer to his opponent than it would be in a traditional stance. As you see, he just leads with the straight right hand which catches Josh Kelly by surprise. And I've mentioned before, this is something similar to what Tank Davis does. When Tank is going for the kill, he often squares up his stance, bringing his straight left hand closer to his opponent. And as you see, he lands a quick 1-2 that shocks his opponent. And here with Josh Kelly along the ropes, Evanesian uses his squared up straight right hand to cut off Josh Kelly trying to circle off. The thing is with a squared stance, it invites the use of straight punches to the exposed center line, which means it's also a prime target for the jab. Also the jab is already a key tool to use against the pressure fighter. This means Avanesian will surely have plenty of jabs thrown at him. So what does Avanesian do about this? As I said in the beginning of the video, Avanesian likes to lead with his straight right changing his head slot as he throws it. This is built-in defense if his opponent throws a jab at the same time, but also he can bait out the jab as it's coming forward since he knows he's open for the jab and then he could slip and counter. So we see here as Avanesian comes forward squared up, this is going to bait the jab from Josh Kelly in which Avanesian catches on the gloves and barely slips to the outside. You see he immediately comes over the top with a counter right hand. And just a few seconds later, we see after Josh Kelly throws another jab, we're going to see the same thing where Avanesian is going to square up while he's coming forward. This baits out the jab. Immediately, he slips to the inside, throwing his right hand when the jab comes. And we all know Crawford as a switch hitter, but Avanesian also likes to switch it up and fight from southpaw as well. From here, the game plan doesn't change though. He'll square up to bring his now rear left hand closer, and then he'll lead his offense with straight left hands while slipping now to the outside of the jab. We see Avanesian come forward in the southpaw stance, and we see him lead with the left hand. And again, coming forward from southpaw again, leads with the straight left hand from a squared up stance, catches Josh Kelly off guard. Here we see Avanesian switch from orthodox to southpaw, but still remaining pretty squared, which allows him to lead with his rear left hand. 
And then here we're going to see as it's coming forward, pressuring still in the southpaw stance. What it's going to do is it's going to draw out the right hand in which he slips and counters with his rear left hand. Now this whole time I've been talking about him leading with straights from his rear hand, whether he's an orthodox or southpaw, but I haven't talked about his jab. The thing is Avenisian doesn't really use his jab often, and that could pose a big problem for him against Terence Crawford, but leading with his straight right hand a lot does allow him to mix in the jab when his opponents get conditioned to that right hand. So just as usual, Avenisian comes forward, baits out the jab, and then counters over the top with his rear right hand. But then just a few seconds later, after hitting Josh Kelly with the right hand, this time he feints the right hand, expecting Kelly to defend against it. But this just sets him up for a swivel jab, because as you see, the turning of the hips allows him to generate a lot of power on that swivel jab. However, at the end of the day, the high guard, as I always say, leaves openings around the flanks. Evanesian has been hit with many hooks and exchanges, and Crawford has excellent hooks from either stance. Given that Evanesian loves to start his offense with straight rights or straight lefts from southpaw, this sets him up for check hooks as he's coming in. If Crawford feints him into committing, then counters over the top. To stack the odds even further, Crawford can switch stances to make sure his hooks are on the same side as Avenesian's straights. Stylistically, this matchup doesn't look too good for Avenesian to me, and can even be a short night at the office if he falls into a check hook from Crawford. However, Avenesian's toughness and power can give anyone a tougher night than expected. It's very possible he sees the final bell, but I'm going to have to lean heavily in Crawford's favor for this. If you want to bet on this fight, please use my BetUS affiliate link in the description. It'll give you a sign up bonus and will also help out the channel. And that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you all for watching and special thanks to my GOAT tier patrons for supporting the channel. Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Albert Chen, Jeff, Dmitry Drozdov, Andre, Gossalageza, Mark Price, Marshall Bot, Swaz and the Bear, and my channel member Hot Pocket Maestro. You guys keep the channel going and I'll see you guys all in the next one.